Chapter 9 Milsha No longer trusting the Galaxy Federation with the Zohar and being one of the people of Zohar himself, in TC 4751, Joachim gets help from Hyams Heavy Industries and Ormus to help turn the MCSRC into the Unknown Territory Investigating and Creation Agency, also known as the UTIC Agency. He did this, of course, under the Galaxy Federation's radar. The UTIC Agency was created for essentially the same purpose as the Mizrahi Cerebral Sciences Research Center, to help Sakura recover and to study the Zohar. Although the Federation would no longer benefit from the findings on the Zohar from Joachim's research, there is still one person who continues to benefit, to benefit from this, Wilhelm. Remember, he owns both Vector, who helped Joachim found the MCSRC, and Hyams Heavy Industries, who helped Joachim found UTIC. Either way, Wilhelm is getting what he wants. It's also worth noting that Wilhelm is, at this time, part of the Federation government and it was thanks to his manipulation that the Galaxy Federation overlooked the creation of Utic. So, as always, Wilhelm has his hands on everybody's cookie jar. Utic's base was called the Labyrinthos and was located in the city of Descupta, the capital of Milsha, where Joe Kim and most of the Mictim refugees fled after the Gnosis appeared. The, la the name Labyrinthos both refers to the whole complex of buildings that make up the Utic base and also the tower in the center of Labyrinthos that serves a U as Utic's HQ. At some point in time, Joachim produces 12 Zohar emulators. They look just like the Zohar, but are meant to replicate the waves produced by their respective vessel of anima. So in reality, they're more like vessel of anima's emulators. But whatever. Yeah, did you forget about the Vessels of Anima? Remember that after the, uh, before the disappearance of Earth, Wilhelm actually managed to get the Vessels of Anima. And because of this, the immigrant fleet has been holding them this whole time. We will go over what the relevance of the Vessels of Anima is in this time period is in a little bit. Joachim's organization also develops Proto-Omega in order to counter the Galaxy Federation. This was a giant, giant mecha. Much, much bigger than the, a than the Ames. That, that was powered using the faint waves from Udu that emanated from the Zohar. I say Joachim's organization because it's not really sure when it was built. Some sources say it was built on Mictum before it was destroyed, which is fine. That works, since Joachim was experimenting on the Zohar and Mictum. However, the same sources also say that it was made by Utik, which was created after Mictum's destruction. And they opposed the Federation. So, I don't know. I don't know who or when it was made, but Joachim had a hand in it. The thing that made Proto Omega so scary was the fact that not only was it powered by the Zohar, so it essentially had an infinite source of energy, but it also had what was called the UMN Phase Transfer Cannon. This cannon used the UMN itself as a way to target absolutely anything in the civilized universe. Along with Proto Omega, Utik also created Proto Merkaba which has a lot of contradicting reasons for existing. Though I can, I, I think it can make sense out of all these reasons. Proto Merkaba was a research base that could lift up into outer space. The purpose for Proto Merkaba that the public was given was that it was a research facility to research and produce realians. But in reality, they were reconfiguring realians here. Remember, realians are android-like beings who are created using both mechanical and organic parts, but mainly organic parts. But even this was a cover story. Yes, it's a cover story that has a cover story. The people working in Proto Merkaba believed they were reconfiguring realians to treat realians with neurological disorders. Yes, realians get neurological disorders. In reality, however, they were being programmed to malfunction. Why? Well, we'll find out later have to leave in suspense, otherwise I'm going to be jumping around the timeline too much. Proto Merkaba also had the secondary function of housing Proto Omega. Because of this, Proto Merkaba was designed to also turn into a fortress by joining with something called the Song of Nephilim. When Proto Merkaba joined with the Song of Nephilim, using the Zohar, it could summon Gnosis, absorb them, and use them as a medium to collect waves from the Zohar and use them as energy. This energy could be fired with enough power to destroy a star. 
Now let's talk about that song at Nephilim. Remember during the second video when I talked about the scientist from Earth called Grimoire Verum? How he deciphered Lamageddon and turned it into a program he could use to access Udu's power through the Zohar? Joachim did research based on Grimoire's work and began attempting to decipher Lamageddon himself. What he got instead was a fragmented version of Lamageddon. This version could be activated through a large pyramid-like building dubbed the Song of Nephilim. It was called that because when the fragmented Lemmageton program was activated, it created a wavelength that, even though not audio in nature, more psychic in nature, could be perceived by strong psychics as a, str as a song in a female voice. The only recognizable word that Joachim could decipher in the song was Nephilim, which is why he called the sound and the building itself were dubbed the Song of Nephilim. Because it was a fragmented version of Lemmageddon, its results were not pleasant. Realians in a large radius of the Song of Nephilim would go berserk, and although humans were not always affected, those with prolonged exposure to the song would eventually go mad as well. This was because of the fragmented connection with Uru that the song created. Because of this, the fragmented Lamageton never served any practical use as Joachim cancelled the work in translating it. Not sure why. Maybe he saw how dangerous it could be or he came across a dead end. Who knows. Either way, the Song of Nephilim building could be merged with Proto Merkaba to form a space fortress to protect Proto Omega. But we already went over that. Through all of this, you may be wondering, what the hell does all of this have to do with Kiri Sakura? I thought Joachim was, had noble intentions. When did he turn into a mad space fortress of death creating scientist? Well, I'll get to that now. You see, with the cooperation of Heim's Heavy Industries, Joachim also obtained some co-workers. One of these was Sellers, who was affiliated with Ormus and with Heinlein, Heinlein being Wilhelm Sudermann as head of Heim's Heavy Industries, and as Heinlein he was also a cardinal of Ormus. Although Joachim and Sellers were both co-workers, they quickly became rivals in the field of studying the Zohar. It was through Sellers' influence that Utek's organization that Joachim created became corrupted and eventually became the military branch of Ormus. This is why they started creating weapons out of Joachim's research and the Zohar. Not only did it become the military branch of Ormus, but it also became Ormus' scapegoat, being able to throw the blame on anything that happened on Utek instead of themselves. Joachim managed to accomplish many more things during his time on Milsha, most of them being pivotal to the story of all games. Among these are creating the 99 series observational unit realians, also known as Kierswassers. These realians resembled young girls who were used for collecting data and were an experimental test model for the later 100 series observational unit realians. Before creating the 100 series observational unit realians, Joachim used the facilities in Proto Merkaba to work on a prototype for them. This prototype, however, would be something much more important for him than just a prototype, and would be Joachim's most important creation, at least for himself. You see, while trying to work on a cure for his daughter, Sakura Mizrahi, he also decided to create a realian that could be a link for Sakura's consciousness so that she could interact with the world normally. This realian was the 100 series observational unit realian prototype and would go by the name Multiple Observative Mimetic Organicus, or MOMO for short. He, he also created Fibronia, Cecily, Kath, and Almadel. All of these were transgenic type realians, meaning that, that, that they were half human and half realian, having some organic and some or synthetic organs. The reason for the creation of these uh, transgenic type realians was that Utik knew that by linking to the Zohar, a human consciousness could make contact with Udu. However, when a human consciousness makes contact with Udu, well, we know what happens. Udu evokes a primal fear into the human. This fear obstructed the experiments. This is why they created transgenic type realians. Making a realian as close to a human as possible, they essentially managed to make human tools that they could easily use for their Zohar link experiments, 
as the fear that humans felt during these experiments were not also felt by realians. Fibronia was used to gather data that was used to control Udu in the Zohar link system. Using this data, they cloned her and made Cecily and Kath, which is why Feb considered them sisters, although if we're using Metal Gear logic, they're more like her daughters. Feb was also used as a template for all the next generation realians. Cecilia and Catherine, was, or as we've been calling them, Cecily and Kath, were kept in a pod connected to the Zohar link system. In order to keep them more easily subdued, their consciousness were locked away in an encephalon world that made them believe they were actually free and happy with each other and their sister Feb. With this link system, Yutik managed to subdue Udu and continue experimenting on ways they could use Udu's energy. Almadel was used as a guinea pig for experiments with Lemageton, but there isn't much more information on her during this time. She will, however, have a central role later on. For now, the most important thing to note is that she is kept in another facility in the Labyrinthos base called the Acute Neurosis Treatment Facility. This is important because, well, because it lets us smoothly transition into our next topic. The Acute Neurosis Treatment Facility was a medical building in the Labyrinthos complex. Remember back in the second video when I mentioned how pure-blooded Abraxans uh, had brainwaves that were sensitive to Udu's waves and how because of this Udu could make contact with them or I guess I should say observe them and how this observation of Udu would eventually render these unlucky people catatonic? Well, I was partially wrong as I thought catatonic and a coma were the same thing. Sakura's brain defect caused by her hypersensitivity to the UMN left her catatonic. But these pure-blooded Abraxans with this synchronicity to Udu's waves did not go catatonic, they went into comas. Anyways, this phenomenon still happens to people and Labyrinthos treats them in the acute neurosis treatment facility. Although by treating it's more like they were experimenting and observing them. Utik's goal for these patients was to learn how to align the vessels of anima with mechas called ESs, ES meaning Ein Sof, which translates to something like no end or unending or infinite. The vessels of anima could each resonate with different people. The people they can resonate with are people with shining wills, so every testament can resonate with a vessel of anima, but also anyone capable of becoming a testament can resonate with a vessel of anima. If a vessel of anima is used as a power source for an ES and the pilot resonates with said vessel of anima, then they can pilot the ES. I know it's complicated, but long story short, when someone is inside of an ES, they have to resonate with the vessel of anima in order to control the ES. When someone who resonates with the vessel of anima enters a state of focus that is often achieved through combat, the, fest the vessel begins to awaken. This is something that Wilhelm needs in order to activate Zarathustra, which is the hidden reason why he manipulates Utik to develop the vessels of anima. Utik believes they're just making advanced weapons, but Wilhelm has his own agenda, as always. This is also the reason why Vector, secretly, is funding Utik's development of vessels of anima, since Vector is, is, is also owned by Wilhelm. However, they have to keep it a secret, as Vector is part of the Federation. Utik believes that this is just a case of weapons manufacturers going doing shady dealings with for the sake of profits. However, we we all know that it's just Wilhelm trying to advance the research of the uh, vessels of anima. The vessels of anima could also act as a mediator between people and the Zohar, so their experiments also help them in the Zohar link experiments. This pretty much means that while resonating with the pilot. A vessel of anima could use the power of the Zohar, the power of Udu, as energy for the ESs. In other words, the ESs are powered by the Zohar. Long story short. It's worth noting that the vessels of anima have no real shape. They take on the shape of whatever is needed for them to be according to the era they exist in and according to the resonating will of the person using it. But no matter what, they are always weapons of war. During this era, they assumed the shape of power generators for the ESs that, for some reason, look like spinal cords. The reason why I've always been using this look is because that's the only look we ever get to see them in. 
Within this facility worked a man named Su Uzuki. He was originally part of the Federation, but defected to Utic for reasons. His reasons for betraying the Federation are a bit murky. It's known that he was originally part of the Federation. It's also known that he joined Utic under false pretenses and as some kind of Utic inspector. It's also known that he then decided to fully commit to Utic and in doing so had a hand in them getting their hands on Lemmageddon, which led them to obtaining the Song of Nephilim. And then, finally, it's known that he regretted this decision probably after realizing what Utic was planning, and so became a spy leaking information to his son, Jin Uzuki, who was still part of the Federation. A possible reason for his defection was that his wife, Aoi Uzuki, was of the people of Zohar and was one of the people that Uru could make contact with. As we know, this means that she would eventually go into a coma, which she did. Well, Aoi was one of the patients, or guinea pigs, held in the acute neurosis treatment facility. While it sounds awful that Su defected to Utic to sacrifice his wife as a test subject, it is stated that he did so in order to save his daughter, Shion Uzuki. This possibly means that he knew his daughter had the same condition as her mom, which would one day put her in a coma and kill her. So maybe he hoped that his research could avoid this for Shion, as his wife was already a lost case. By the time Kevin Winnicott had reached the age of 15, he was so intelligent that he graduated college and was working for Utic and Labyrinthos as one of their top scientists. There, by Wilhelm's command, he became Joachim's assistant and kept an eye on Shion. Why? Well, Shion is a very important person. She's actually the reincarnation of Mary's maiden. I... I guess consciousnesses get, get recycled? Anyways, because of this, she was crucial to the activation of Zarathustra, as before Zarathustra can be activated, the willing will of the maiden of Mary is needed. However, nobody except Wilhelm and Kevin knew this up to this point. Unbeknownst to Joachim, Kevin was actually spying on him for Ormus, as even though he was working on Utic, it's possible that he never knew the connections that Utic had with Ormus, as remember, Joachim started Utic with noble intentions, and Ormus is a secret society. Kevin reports to Sellers and Margulis. Margulis is a native of Braxton. Because of this, he despises the Federation for its treatment and eventual destruction of his home planet at Braxis, or Mictum. He is the chief inquisitor of Ormus and the commander of Utic. He believes that Ormus's goal is to find a way to and return to Lost Jerusalem. While the current patriarch of Ormus is Patriarch Sergius XVII, Margulis believes that, this, that Sergius is a petty old fool not fit for the role and his real loyalty lies with the Cardinal of Ormus who shares the same goal as himself. The Cardinal's name is... How is it progressive? Lord Heinlein is concerned. Lord Heinlein? Heinlein. Yes, Heinlein. Wilhelm's pseudonym as the CEO of Hyams Heavy Industries. So, Wilhelm is also a Cardinal of Ormus, one of the highest ranking positions in Ormus. In reality, returning to Lost Jerusalem, Earth, is a fake goal that Wilhelm gave to Margulis in order to easily manipulate him. For now, Margulis follows the will of Heinlein while only pretending to be loyal to Sergius.